Hey everyone! So, I wanted to do a quick rundown of my big three items that I'm taking on the PCT. That includes my pack, my shelter, and my whole sleep system. So, for my pack, I have a Waymark Gear Frameless 50 liter pack. I actually did a whole initial review on it, which I will put the link in the description below if you want to check that out. Uh, this weighs about 36 ounces with all of my extra features that I added, like a hip belt and a water bladder. And um, this is a custom made pack, and they range from about $195 up to, on average, about $250. Uh, you can keep adding things on, which will make it more expensive. Then for my pack cover for when it's raining, it's just an Osprey uh, pack cover. It was $35 and it weighs 3 ounces. For my shelter, I am using a Z-Pax Solplex tent. I also did uh, another initial review on this, which I'll put the link in the description below if you want to check that out for all the full details. But with the um, shelter itself, the bag, and the 8 titanium stakes that I got with it, it weighs a little under 19 ounces, and these go for about, all together, it's about $605 with this uh, camo material and with the stakes. So it is a bit pricey. I did get this used for about $400 total, so that really helped me out a lot to save some money there. But um, yeah, full details will be linked to my bio, like I said. Then for my sleeping bag, I have a Nemo Rave 15 degree sleeping bag. Um, it's, uh, I think, 650 fill uh, down. I'll take this out in a minute and show you, but what's really cool about this sleeping bag is it has like those thermogills for like ventilation. So um, you can be warm, but also um, if it gets too hot, you can like unzip them and let some air flow in and, and kind of cool you off without having you to like take your whole body out of the sleeping bag. And also something else that's really cool is like down at the foot box, it is waterproof. So if you're worried about getting your feet wet or being too cold, if there's too much condensation getting into the tent, this will actually hopefully help keep your feet warm and dry, which is obviously a very big deal. Uh, this is the long version, which I don't need because I'm barely 5'4", but I remember when I got it, they didn't have the, the regular size in stock so I just got the long version and then I was going to like take it back and then get the regular sized one when um, it came back in stock but I actually liked it so much because I had so much room for my feet to squirm around so this is $320 and weighs about 3 pounds and 3 ounces which is 51 ounces total uh, it's not the best at compressing I could have shoved this in a little bit better but I already had the sleeping bag and I loved it and I've used it backpacking many times so I didn't really want to change it up. Like I said, it's 15 degrees so it's pretty warm and I love it. So this is my sleeping bag laid out. It has been in its sack for a long time so it's very wrinkly. But here is the waterproof foot box I was telling you about. Not like you could really tell from the video. But here is the ventilation quills I was telling you about. Here, I got them in zipped. Right in there. The color is also awesome. Also, also awesome. All right, oh, and I love this little hoodie. It keeps me so warm. Yep. Yeah. It's just super soft and comfy and cozy, and I've had some of my best sleeps in this sleeping bag on my REI Flash sleeping pad. So I'm hoping I can achieve that again on this hike. So for the sleeping pad, I'm gonna be bringing, at least for the desert portion of the PCT, it's one of these bad guys. Um, I'm sure you've never seen one of these before. Um, it's a Thermarest Z-Lite. I have the regular size. So the Thermarest weigh about 14 ounces. They're super light, and these things are cool because you can just like attach them anywhere on your pack. They don't obviously have to go in the pack. Uh, that'd be kind of hard. So all sleeping pads have an R value, which is basically a measurement of insulation. And it goes from an R value of one to eight. And the higher the R value, the better the insulation. So these guys have an R value of 2.6, which is, which is fine for, you know, warmer temperatures. And then, 
you know, if you are in like a shelter and then you have a sleeping bag, um, this should be good enough. Um, but I have another sleeping pad that if I am snow camping that I am going to want to use. And I would like to mention that this cost me about $45. Um, so it's not that expensive for something that basically you can like, you know, use and abuse for a while. So for my inflatable sleeping pad, I have an REI Flash. This is a regular wide. It weighs, I think, 15 ounces and it cost me $109. But it has an insulation rating of 3.7, so a little bit better than the Thermarest. I really like this pad. I've used it for about a year and a half now. I've never had a problem with it. I've heard mixed reviews from other people, like they get pinhole leaks in it often and that seems very annoying. But like I said, I haven't had a problem with it yet. Um, if I am going to be snow camping for a while, I am going to want to be using this and my Thermarest because I do want an insulation rating of over five because that's what expert, experts recommend when you are snow camping uh, to make sure you stay as warm as possible. But yeah, I like it a lot and um, I plan on continuing to use it. But yeah, I guess we'll see how I feel uh, when I'm out on the trails and if I do want to get this shipped out to me. Here is my sleeping pad, the REI Flash uh, inflatable one. Here. I just love it. It's super comfortable. I've never woken up and had it be where my body was like laying on the ground. I feel like it's held up really well overnight. One thing I love about this pad, which I think most have nowadays, but it has two valves. One, does that say, to inflate and one to deflate. So you're blowing into one and then there's like a little valve that doesn't let the air come back out once you've blown that portion up. Anyway, I blew this up in about 12 seconds. Super quick, and this fits right into my sleeping bag, which I love doing because it helps the sleeping pad not slip around while I'm sleeping. So the prices that I stated for everything were the prices that I bought them at, and um, maybe you can find them cheaper somewhere else, or maybe they're on sale now, but yeah, I just thought that some of that information would help you. As you can see, a lot of this gear is really expensive, and um, it takes a while to acquire, and you know, you just gotta do the best you can because this stuff is pricey and especially if you try to go more ultralight, it gets even pricier and I just don't have the money right now to make everything extremely ultralight. Um, it is something that maybe one day I will be able to get to but it's gonna take me, you know, a bit longer um, and more money to um, continue to buy all that ultralight stuff. But I'm pretty comfortable and confident in my big three. Um, I've used most of it except my Z-Pax uh, Solplex tent. Everything else I've used before, I love it. I, yeah, I'm comfortable with it and I'm really excited to use it out on the PCT. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in again. You know, let me know if you have any questions or comments. You know, just put them in uh, the comment boxes below. And yeah, I hope to see you guys out on the trails. Okay, bye. I'm so ready for this. <sighs> You can just go to sleep right now. Ugh. Bye. Good night.